So, contemporary quantum field theory is a very active subject. Uh, seen fantastic successes lately. One has the standard model of particle physics, which uh, just saw the, the, the big success of the discovery of the Higgs boson in CERN. Um, in many ways, this theory is just being validated over and over again. It uh, predicts various physical quantities to the correct, you know, 10 decimal precision and so on. There is little doubt that a large part of this theory is just right and is doing exactly what it should do in physics. The problem is that the way that this is described mathematically, or sort of as it were mathematically, is that it uses some infinite dimensional integrals that we do not have a precise mathematical definition for. So quantum field theory is a huge contemporary uh, challenge for mathematics. Uh, we need to somehow uh, figure out how to make sense of this. Um, I would say that, that we stand in front of a, if that's possible, big revolution in mathematics, I would think, similar to when Newton and Leibniz introduced calculus. It must be a completely new machinery which will somehow, in many ways, revolutionize the way that we do mathematics. Uh, let me try to illustrate this by, by some uh, aspects of quantum topology. So uh, that, that, that takes us about 30 years back to when uh, Witten considered a very particular uh, quantum field theory. He took uh, quantum churn simons theory. Uh, so this is a very special uh, quantum field theory because um, it, the, 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 the theory is such that the Hamiltonian of the theory is zero. So physicists would say, well, what's that? Because then there is no dynamics. And that's right, there is virtually no dynamics. The only dynamics there is, is when the universe goes through a catastrophe where it changes its topology. And so that's the sort of basic thing about quantum topology is that it is studying quantum field theories, which is only senses changes in topology. And so uh, Witten proposed that uh, if he took quantum churn simons theory for a certain compact Lie group called SU2, and if, so, so in this theory it is also possible to have observables, and these observables are actually not embedded in three space. And so he was able to devise an observable associated to this uh, not inside three space, and he was saying that I can argue with these path integrals that I get an invariant of knots and I don't just get any invariant, I get the Jones polynomial. And so, of course, there were lots of people in mathematics who was extremely uh, stunned by this because here was actually an intrinsic three-dimensional definition of the Jones polynomial as Atiyah had asked for a few years earlier. However, it was using these path integrals that we don't understand. But so this was quickly after followed by developments by Resetikin and Tureyev, where they used the theory of quantum groups, representation theory of quantum groups, to actually rigorously write down all the properties that these uh, quantum field theories should have. This was guided by previous axioms by Atiyah and by Siegel and by Witten. And they wrote down all the axioms precisely. They took the representation theory of this quantum group, and then they were actually able to show that they could mathematically construct precisely the output of this path integral. And so in that sense, we think that these special, very special path integrals are actually being constructed mathematically. And so there was a lot of activity around studying uh, these new quantum uh, 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 field theories which are topological, so T of T's. And this was basically the birth of quantum topology. And um, one can say that lots of things evolved from here. Uh, so many other applications of quantum field theory was made to various parts of mathematics following shortly thereafter. 
Several of them had the fantastic feature that uh, one would take a particular um, mathematical problem that mathematician had studied and one would turn whatever one had to compute in this theory into some uh, a quantum field theory observable or expectation value of some sort. One would then do basic elementary calculus manipulations to these path integrals. Of course, non-rigorous, but fine in physics. One would end up with a completely different theory and one would then uh, be able to say that that thing relates to another mathematical precise theory. And one would then simply say, well, here are two branches of mathematics that hasn't connected before, but these two are now connected. And every time we ran into this, mathematicians from the two areas, of course, hit on this and started working on this and saw, indeed, yes, uh, these things are related and hard labor followed to prove that what physicists were actually predicting was indeed happening. So this has sort of been a theme through quantum topology throughout uh, the last uh, 30 years. Uh, in various aspects of it, we've seen many branches be affected, uh, you know, gauge theories in low dimensions, uh, many, many different areas has benefited strongly from, from, from this interaction. And what it sort of has made completely clear to a large body of people who study geometry and topology is that we really somehow should come to grips with what is this quantum field theory. Because it seems to be a tool that could allow us to really make much stronger progress. Um, so I, I would say that uh, if we go back to, to sort of uh, TQFT and, uh, and, and those kind of aspects, the really wonderful things that have happened there, for example, just to somehow illustrate what I was talking about before, was that shortly after the whole thing was introduced, uh, Witten had actually also proposed that if one took a certain moduli space, in the moduli space of flat connections on the surface, then one should be able to apply geometric quantization to this. And this quantization, this moduli space, would give a finite dimensional vector space. And this finite dimensional vector space would have a certain dimension. And uh, referring back to work to, of Velinde in conformal field theory and connecting everything up, uh, Witten was proposing that there would be this beautiful Valinda formula that would compute the, the dimensions of, of, of these, what I call holomorphic sections over the, of a certain line bundle over these moduli spaces. And it was a total surprise to people who were working in the quantization of these moduli spaces. Because the formula was clearly an integer. But the expression given for it was <laughs> very far from an integer. It was evaluations of cos and sines and so on, at rational fractions of pi. And it, 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 for example, it took the genius of Don Sackier to actually verify with nothing else. If you just start with this formula and say, I want to prove that it's an integer. So he was able to do this. And subsequently, lots of mathematics was developed to actually verify this Willinda formula turned out to be completely right. Just one example of what I was talking about before, that there are these many predictions that come from physics, and they clearly seem to be right. Um, this has spurred a lot of activity and interactions between people who are studying moduli spaces, and then people who are studying quantum topology, and people who are studying other aspects of quantum field theory, other kinds of quantum field theories that have special properties. So these are supersymmetric theories that have certain twists, and when you do these certain twists, you get a topological theory. And this is still ongoing today. Uh, by no means has this been fully explored. We're still discovering that there are lots of very in interesting aspects of moduli spaces that are related. So geometric Langland seems to be related to a quantum field theory that Kapustin and Witten has proposed some years ago, which are indeed such a topological twist of Yang-Mills theory. And basically, uh, also now we're starting to realize that we can actually also quantize the moduli spaces of non-compactly groups uh, using much of the same techniques and we're really starting to try to see if there isn't also a quantum, a topological quantum field theory for non-compact gauge groups. 
And these are sort of opening up uh, relations to the Higgs bundle moduli spaces and new Valinda formulae are actually coming out right now. So I, uh, there's some recent work uh, where we actually have derived new Valinda formulas in this non-compact setting, which uses a certain equivariant uh, version of the index uh, of, of the index formula due to Telemann and Woodward to actually prove that these new Valinda formulae are actually coming out. But I would say that the, the, the big challenges in the field is to really try to at first go take all of these existing quantum field theories and their precise mathematical realizations and understand that all of the tools that are being used in quantum field theory can really be verified. So, a good example is the perturbative expansions that these path integrals are supposed to have. This is the Feynman program for understanding these path integrals, understanding them in terms of sums over graphs. And um, this is the one that's only available for the standard model. But uh, that's not only available in the theories I'm talking about here because we actually have an exact description of the partition function and of the observables, of the quantum observables. So we have an option to actually try to understand that the whole thing satisfies these perturbative rules and perturbative expansions summing over graphs that Feynman was proposing. And this is happening in certain cases and research are going on in this direction. But also another aspect of this which seems to be appearing is that certain quantum field theories seems to have a specific special limit where they in three dimensions sees geometrically very symmetric structures. So what I have in mind here is Kashev's volume conjecture, which says that the asymptotic expansion of a certain quantum invariant actually limits to the hyperbolic volume of a three-manifold. And uh, this hyperbolic volume arises out of the uh, Thurston's geometrization uh, program, which was uh, proved by Perlman, which really establishes that all three manifolds can be decomposed into pieces, and each of these pieces have very ideal geometric structures. And slowly it seems to be the case that we are starting to understand that these complicated path integrals are kind of sampling this very beautiful and symmetric geometries in a certain way and they are just somehow, some way to repackage this very symmetric information. And so we're basically seeing that more and more aspects of quantum field theory seems to be relating back to ideal shapes and topology and geometry of, 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 of spaces. And therefore it could be really a challenge to try to see if one can turn the picture around and actually understand that all of these averages must have expressions which are much simpler and which simply just are sampling ideal geometry of various configurations. And so, of course, it would be an ultimate challenge to take this back to the standard model and to see if, if, if a similar picture might be amenable there. Uh, this is, is, I think, out of reach at the moment, but I think it's a challenge and it certainly remains a challenge for mathematics to understand how do we define quantum field theory.